What up everybody and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz and I talk about blades and today we've got a brand debut here on Baz on Blades. We got our first product from Sin Cut Knives. Sin Cut Knives being the third tier company within the We Knives Civivi Knives family. Uh, Sin Cut being the more sort of quote unquote budgety priced products uh, and I can tell you right now there's zero quality lost in this product that I can see period uh, this is going to be one of those reviews where I love pretty much every damn thing about this knife and could not recommend it more highly just get that straight off of the chest at the beginning of the video. You might as well just, if you like a clip point blade profile, you might as well just go buy one of these. Now, I did pick mine up at White Mountain Knives from Justin over there, taking care of me as usual, just like he does everybody else, because he is one of the best things to happen to the knife enthusiast world as far as online retailers go fantastic doing business with him so uh the price over there on this is like 56 dollars that's not too bad but you throw in one of justin's 10 percent discount codes and you've got that down to about 50 dollars and 40 cents shipped right to your door and i think that's a pretty decent price on this knife you can make that call yourself and i'm going to give you every bit of the information that i think you will need to make that decision now the first thing is first i want to get out of the way on this we're going to get out of order here before anything else and we're going to talk about the most ridiculous lanyard that i've ever seen come on a knife do you see how big that lanyard is compared to how big the knife is they are the same size that is utterly ridiculous uh, there is no way you're going to use this knife with this lanyard on it. Look at what you're going to have flopping around while you try to use this knife. Uh, it's not a retention lanyard in a retention lanyard. You would run it this long, but you would have a loop that you would put your hand through. It would be around your wrist, and you would use that retention lanyard with a knife that you would be chopping with mostly. Okay, uh, or if you were in a situation where you needed to retain that knife in case you dropped it, you were in a hostile environment. Um, this is utterly ridiculous, and we are going to take it off of the knife right now. That does come with the knife. Please send cut, Civivi, we, whoever the hell I need to talk to about that. Just don't, don't even waste the money on this. That is not even usable. I would question anybody that left that on that knife. It is so in the way. And it is literally the only negative thing I will say about this knife. Pretty sure about that because I love this knife. So the uh, Sin Cut Waxahachi. Waxahachi? What the hell? Yeah, it's the name of a city in Texas, I believe. And it's sort of a pseudo-Indian name that... If you actually go and you look it up and you deep dive on it, it's, a, it's sort of a weird sort of story. I, they don't even know if it's even a real word, It's if it's even an Indian word. They don't even know. Officially, they don't even know. So uh, I don't even know about that. Let's talk about the knife. The Sin Cut Waxahachi. Uh, it's an EDC size fixed blade knife we will knock the dimensions out first and i've got some a uh, little more detailed dimensions here there's a couple of things i want to talk about uh blade length you're looking at about three and three quarters of an inch and right at nine and a half centimeters uh the cutting edge three and five eighths of an inch or nine centimeters your blade stock thickness 135 thousandths of an inch or 3.4 millimeters your blade width at the widest point, 1.2 inches or 31 millimeters. Handle length. I'm going to give you two dimensions here. 
Um, your overall handle length from the front of the scale to the butt end is four and one eighths of an inch, but your actual usable handle length is shorter. You're going to be in between this sh very small sort of forward guard and the butt end of the handle, and that's going to be three and three quarters of an inch. It is compact okay uh metric that's ten and a half centimeters overall nine and a half centimeters for usable grip length um handle thickness exactly a half an inch and that's about 13 millimeters handle width at the widest point 1.14 inches or 29 millimeters Overall length, seven and seven eighths of an inch or 20 centimeters. Uh, your blade to handle ratio is 90%. If you go from uh, blade length to cutting edge length to handle ratio, that is 87% and is pretty doggone decent. 87% um, cutting edge length to handle length is actually pretty decent. Uh, behind the edge thickness on this inch and a quarter wide 135,000 stock thickness blade is about 21 hundredths or 21 thousandths of an inch I'm sorry um, and then it, that's about a half a millimeter behind the edge thickness. Very good utilitarian cutting um, blade profile on this. Uh, edge geometry, grind profile, all of that comes together uh, very well on this blade. And then your weight, uh, you're looking at 4.34 ounces knife alone. You're bringing the excellent Kydex sheet that goes to 7.34 ounces, and that is 123 grams, 208 grams, respective. Um, so, pretty compact fairly lightweight. We're going to bring that sheath back in here in a minute and take a look at it because it's fantastic just like the knife is. Um, material wise you're looking at 9CR 18MOV stainless steel for your blade steel. That is a budget stainless steel. Uh, it is a Chinese made steel and it is uh, it, it approximates 440 BC. Um, just straight across the board. It's closer to 440C, in my opinion, um, and it behaves much like 440C. Now, there is some additional alloying in uh, 9CR 18MOV, but it is nothing extreme and is basically there for grain structure refinement, and that aids in um, it, you know, it sort of boosts a little bit uh, the attributes of the steel and um, increases machinability as far as production uh, goes with the steel. Uh, you know, it's a it's decent 9CR 18MOV. I would say, let's say it's the weak point of this knife as far as knife snobbery goes. Um, I love this design enough that I would love to see it in a, an upgraded version. Um, do one of the stainless Damascus versions or, or do something really high end for sin cut and do it in like 154 cm. Now that would be something right there. So 9CR18 MOV in your blade steel, uh, it's all right. It's all right. You know, at $50, I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, in this version, we've got green canvas micarta handle scales that are very well done. They are very attractive. They feel very good. We will talk about that handle much more later on in review. Um, then you've got two stainless, these are black oxide finished stainless screws. They are T8 and they're stainless screws. So there you go. There you go, material wise. Uh, let's go into fit and finish on this knife uh, for that 9CR 18 MOV clip point blade. Fit and finish is perfect. I, I can't find anything, anything at all wrong with the way this blade is. Anything, anything. The way it's ground, the way it's sharpened, the way it's finished, the way it's marked. Everything about the production fit and finish quality on this blade is perfect. 
I can't find anything. Let's get up close. It is in a black, black wash finish. It's finished in black and then stone wash to draw it back a little bit. Very nicely done. Uh, nice, crisp, revealing edges on it. But enough darkness left in there. And then you've got the surface texture of the stone wash itself as the light plays across it. Uh, that's a very, very, very attractive finishing as far as I'm concerned. You can also get these in G10 handles uh, with satin finish. And I believe there's a natural or jade G10 and a black G10 in the satin version, also in 9CR 18MOV. Now, this coating is for looks only because this is a stainless steel. Uh, it is a subdued coating as far as, uh, you know, reflecting light. Um, it's just so well done. The grinds are very, very clean. Very, very clean, 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 clean. Everything is crisp where it should be. Everything is soft where it should be. Uh, the layout of the grind is fantastic. The uh, the appearance of the grind, the aesthetic choices made there, uh, fantastic. It's a very good looking, very usable clip point profile and grind. Uh, flat grind, very high, almost full height. Uh, on 135 thousandths of blade stock thickness, which is perfect for this knife. Look down the length of this knife and catch the stock thickness there. And it just, it really looks very balanced as far as what we've got going here size-wise. Um, yeah, that flat grind gives you a nice thin behind the edge thickness, about 21 thousandths. Um, the secondary grind here, the edge bevel from tip to heel is very well done. It is very well done. Uh, this flat grind for the uh, swedge on the clip here, uh, the swedge is offset from the center line of the clip. Uh, just another aesthetic thing. Uh, very well done. Very even. You can look across the spine of the blade. The grind is very even. You're going to fall back into fantastic jumping. Holy smokes, bows on blades. You never say jumping is fantastic. This is really, really good. I would still like to see it slightly more aggressive, but it is really good. There is a nice long patch of it all the way from the juncture of the handle scales to the blade. Uh, most of the way up this long ramp uh, to the tip of the spine on this clip point design is a very long length of jamping, um, which is one, one of the mistakes that most knife manufacturers make. The jamping is insufficient. Um, this is really well done. Let's put some flesh down in that jamping and you can see what we got going here as far as that goes. It is a really very well done. So kudos to Sincut on that. Uh, markings, crisply done. Not too billboarded up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, fit and finish on the blade there. I, I can't say anything bad about it at all. Look at that sharpening choil. You can absolutely see that this choil is big enough to get out into the flat of the blade. So you're, if you resharpen this blade, as you come to the termination point at the base of the blade, you're not going to... You're not going to be getting into the plunge and having a smiley face as you sharpen from the thinner blade section up into the thicker part of the plunge. Fantastic job there. Also, something missed on most knives. Most knives, even if they have a sharpening choil, which they all should, um, they're improperly done on most knives. That's a really very good. Uh, let's get into the handle here. As far as fit and finish, we're going to get very close up and we are going to look around the perimeter of these canvas micarta scales, which are uh, perfectly machined, um, perfectly affixed, centered, 
perfectly even side to side. They are just beautifully done. And you know what? That's It's CNC machining. It's nice flat material. And it is just so well done. It's, it's just beautiful to look at at this price point. You get the effect of sort of a crowned spine here on around the handle perimeter because as you look at the spine of the uh, handle here there's a large facet chamfer on both sides here uh, and that it is very large so it does give it sort of a crowned feel even though it is still flat it is not round and crowned uh, but it does give it that feel and that is proud of the handle scales this is sort of a boxed type of look uh, but it is not extreme uh, it's not extremely boxed in so you do get the effect of it but it's not too much um, to make the knife feel awkward in hand like you've got too much of a raised spine um, everything as far as you know doing that and this large chamfer radius flat again around the perimeter of the handle it just comes together in the look of this knife it's got a lot of flat planes that are also utilitarian and ergonomic um, it's, I just love so much about this knife, you know, talking about fit and finish, I just showed you just as close as I could on the handle. There's, there's zero flaws in this knife. I mean, there is zero flaws anywhere in this knife. There is nothing bad I can say about the fit and finish on this knife at all. And while we're talking about that, we're going to bring the sheath in. We've got this Kydex sheath. It is a sandwich build, a perimeter riveted or eyeleted in this case. Um, it is in heavier 80 thousandths Kydex thickness. It is so well made and so well finished. Um, I have done Kydex myself. I have bought custom Kydex. Uh, I've owned factory Kydex from a gazillion different brands on fixed blades up in the, you know, three or four or $500 price range. Again, I've owned multiple, multiple custom made fixed blade knives. Um, they came in Kydex, and other than uh, one piece that I had from Greg Lightfoot that was shark skin covered Kydex, uh, none of them were any better made than this sheet. Fantastic job, and this is on a $50 knife. We have a co branded Civivi and Terzula. Yeah, Mr. Terzula. Uh, sort of tech lock attachment point here. Um, of course, this can be moved around multiple attachment points as far as these eyelets go. Set up for vertical carry is the way it comes. It can be flipped around and set up for horizontal carry for scout carry. And that would be a good uh, option for this compact knife that's just basically seven and seven eighths of an inch overall length. Um, I very much like this sheet. Now, I've seen a couple of reviews where they say that the edge was run a little wide and the eyelets are a little too far out. Uh, but I have actually looked at this sheet and having formed Kydex before, I'm looking at it a little different. Yes, it is a little wider than it absolutely has to be. But it is not so wide that I would consider it to be any sort of negative at all. Uh, in fact, if I was going to do this sheath and I wanted to get more aggressive with making it compact and moving the eyelets in a little tighter to the molding, I would probably only go about an eighth of an inch narrower across this sheath. An eighth of an inch. I wouldn't go any more than that myself if I was making the sheath myself. 
so I don't see any reason to ding that as a negative. Um, you've got great spacing for the islets. You could set this up in multi configuration as far as carry. And again, you get the tech lock. These things are twelve or fifteen dollars a piece. Just then, they're super tough. They're really thick, uh, high glass, uh, nylon reinforced um, thermoplastic. They're they're damn near indestructible. Again, um, they've been around for years and they're well respected. This is not a version that has the secondary lock on it, so you have to keep that in mind as far as using a tech lock goes. Uh, I think the placement is perfect as it comes from the factory to give a good ride height for, um, say, belt carry. I've been belt carrying this today, and uh, I, it's just perfect. It hugs super tight into the body. I've been carrying it about the four o'clock position right behind the hip on my strong side and it just disappears. It's a nice compact knife in a compact, very stiff and well made sheath. Uh, 80 thousandths kydex, let's look at the edge of this. 80 thousandths kydex is, um, I mean, that's 160 thousandths right there, guys. That's that's pretty doggone thick along the edge. That is a heavy, heavy kydex for this size of sheath for a sub-4 inch uh, bladed knife. Very well done. You do give up a little bit in weight on that. Uh, let's see, what was the weight? It was 4.3 ounces, uh, just enough, and 7.3 ounces with the sheath. So three ounces on the sheath itself. Again, tech locks, it's a pretty big hunk of uh, glass reinforced plastic. They're fairly heavy. Um, just super well done on that. Now, let's talk about uh, ergos and utilitarian use, and then we'll close this out and get out of this review. So clip point blade, basically the only reason to not buy this knife is if you do not like clip point blades. And if you don't like that, that clip point right there, I mean, more power to you. I just don't, I just don't see how you can go on. I mean, that's pretty, wow. That's just such a good looking clip point. I mean, even if I didn't like clip points, I'd be like, oh my God, that's so freaking cool. It is. It's got that high peak on the spine um, with this sort of modern rake to the clip. And then you've got uh, the swedge ground, uh, this flat ground swedge is halfway offs offset from the clip itself to give it another facet, a, a more detail in that grind. Uh, it's just super good looking clip point. Nice, acute tip. Again, perfectly sharpened. So it is very tippy, pointy, picky, pokey, catchy uh, with zero pressure at all. It pierces, guys. It just instantly catches. Uh, but it's not like delicate thin, although, as I always say, uh, you should be kicked straight in the balls if you pry, if you pry anything with this knife. Do not pry with your knives. Don't pry with a clip point for sure, because you will break the tip of the blade off. Uh, nice, basically continuous belly from the tip to uh, damn near all the way, guys. Damn near all the way. You do have about an inch of straight, flat, cutting edge here. If you want to choke up on this and get really close and do some detail uh, cutting with it. Again, 21 thousandths behind the edge. That's pretty slicey, guys. This thing will do some cutting. Uh, came crazy sharp from the factory. Uh, the quality of the edge on this is very good. Whoever was at the station doing the sharpening on this run of the production of this knife... Uh, had very good hands. Uh, this person uh, was very steady, very precise, and that edge shows it. Um, so, I, you know, as far as utilitarian use, uh, cutting use out of this, it's going to be on the slicier side of cutting. Um, I have not found it to have very much resistance. This surface finish has been pretty slick, and you can see 
Uh, I've used this to do some cutting with, guys, and it's not marking up at all. It does, it very much glides on that finish. Uh, so it, it doesn't have any surface coarseness or anything. It's a perfectly smooth sort of PVD-ish uh, feeling finish. I don't know what it is. Uh, it may not be a, a higher end finish, but it is uh, a very solid feeling finish and it doesn't really cause much drag as far as cutting goes. Yeah, I, I very much, very much, very much love the blade profile, the grind choices, um, that fantastic sharpening choil, fantastic ramp up to the high point of the spine, fantastic jimping on it. That is just an ultimately usable three and three quarter inch clip point blade. Buy this knife, seriously. Buy this knife, 50 damn dollars, guys. Come on. This handle is on the compact side. Four and an eighth inches overall, but only three and three quarters of an inch in the actual grip area. In my large size hands with medium length, uh, chunky fingers, this is how it fits. Okay, I do have large size hands fat medium length fingers so call me a large that's how it fits right there it is all of the handle i am taking up i am not compressed i'm not uncomfortable i have plenty of real estate uh, um, i don't feel like i'm going to fall over this sort of abbreviated guard at the front and of course i'm still fully on that handle here in full grip so it is on the compact side but as far as small, medium, large hands, perfect fit, extra large, it might start feeling a little short at that point. Uh, it's a fairly narrow um, handle profile, but you do have a full half inch thickness on the handle thickness, and you've got these nice thick slabs of micarta. Those are nice thick slabs of my carter they're at least the same thickness as the stock thickness for the blade that gives it a very solid very balanced hand feeling even though it's a narrow profile sort of feel in the hand um, it's very tool like in the hand you might even get lucky enough that your fingers fall into these detail holes that are drilled through the handle uh, that they do drop the weight. They give it a fairly decent balance. It's balanced eh, right about there. It's balanced to the forward edge of this first hole right here. Uh, that, you know, you can see where it falls in my grip. That's where my hand's going to fall, right on that rotation point as far as a balance goes. Uh, it gives it a very handy uh, sort of feel. Uh, you know where the tip is. You know how to rotate it to use it. Uh, the handle is comfortable. It's wide open. It's got a nice amount of ergonomic drop to it because, again, your hand is not straight and flat. It is curved on the inside, and you are very ergonomic with a sort of a, a drop to that grip. Uh, the holes, they look cool. Uh, that's the first thing I noticed about the knife, which drew me straight up into that clip point, and I was done. I was done, guys, and this is a fantastic-looking little knife. It is just a good-looking knife with a fantastic wide-open handle shape, uh, fantastic-looking and performing a uh, modern clip point profile, fantastic grinds on that, flat grinds, nice thin behind the edge on the slicey side because they didn't use quarter inch blade stock. You know, we're at 135 thousandths or 3.4 millimeters on that blade stock. And in a three and three quarter inch blade, seven, seven eighths inch overall sort of sizing for this knife. Everything just comes together and works perfectly. Add into that a fantastic sheath. I mean, fantastic.
fantastic. Whoever is heading up the department that does a Kydex over at Sincut and Civivi at least, because I've got another piece of of Kydex from them that it is just fantastic too. Man, I got to review that knife from Civivi. Um, just fabulous, fabulous package, guys. Fabulous little knife design. Just wonderful to look at and wonderful to use. And at fifty dollars, yeah, I'll do that. Nine CR eighteen MOV, easy to resharpen. Going to perform about like four forty C. I'm good if, if I'm at that level or higher on blade steel, depending on price point. I'm good to go. And at fifty dollars, uh, I'm I'm really good to go on this. Sin cut Civivi, we do a premium version of this. Uh, do it in 154CM with carbon fiber scales. Do it in the stainless Damascus with, you know, a different color micarta or something exclusive. Uh, do it around the $100 price point or slightly less, and I'll buy another one. <laughs> I mean, I'll buy another one. So there you go. Baz on Blade likes it. The Sin Cut Knives, Waxahachie. The first Sincut product here at Baz on Blades. We've gone over 31 minutes on this, and I love it. You guys, go and buy one of these little fixed blades. It is, it's just fantastic. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again.